right now we have two products one is a low speed vehicle one is a high speed vehicle and to talk about the iterations that we made in these products specifically each product have uh, went through minimum 10 iterations right now mm-hmm. so whatever we showcased on shark tank even that uh, model was around 2 to 3 iterations and what took us or what is taking us so long to get into the uh, market is we don't want to just you know uh, roll out a vehicle just for the sake of saying that you know we are selling evs we wanted to actually uh, or we want to give a vehicle that would not fail on road because you know building a product is is difficult uh, and building a product ground up is actually very difficult and it is not just another electronic device that we are making it's it's a vehicle and uh, you know if our vehicle actually uh, you know faces any issues or let's say um, breaks down in the middle of the road it might actually uh, you know might turn fatal for someone so we did not we did not want to uh, deliver a vehicle that is not tested so uh, we have been doing multiple iterations right now the low speed vehicle is launched already uh, it is about to get into production so next month we are starting the production we are going to deliver these vehicles uh, from the first week of may and uh, there are a couple of products which are planned in pipeline uh, which have emerged from these two products as well and which are again separately in the three wheeled and four wheeled category again when i'm saying in the three wheeled and four wheeled category i don't uh, or we as as a company we don't plan to enter in the you know three wheeled rickshaw category or four wheeled car category but we want to focus on uh, majorly vehicles that will again empower the society and will help people do their businesses so we don't want to get uh, in the passenger category we want to focus on the utility category i would not say goods carrying cap- uh, category of automotive but utility category uh, vehicles that will be customizable or that might be transformable under uh, you know under under a minute uh, and again in three wheel category also and in the four wheel category also same concept just mm-hmm. with higher payload capacity higher volumetric capacity and uh, that is that is planned in pipeline i would say 2 years down the line right now we want to focus on the two wheeler uh, segment so uh, whenever we are introducing to any investors we uh, we refrain from saying that we are a ev company or we are a two wheeler company because mm-hmm. we are making something which is our our vision is something which is much more bigger than just two wheelers or evs we are trying to make platforms that are modular so that is that is what the entire uh, product line is planned uh tell us more about the certifications and uh, the usps uh, like the water resistant batteries uh, and uh, overall architecture on the whole okay so to talk about the certification we uh, so like i mentioned we have two models the low speed vehicle has already attained the certification uh, we call it homologation so it is already homologated uh, the high speed vehicle we have already sent to the uh, authorities for homologation and uh, we are expecting in the next 2 to 3 months it will be homologated uh, and to talk about the ips that we have built uh, so specifically the battery pack is one of our own ips uh, we have ensured that we have made an ip67 rated battery pack which is dust proof and waterproof and we have uh, tried it uh, submerging into 1 uh, uh, meter depth water mm-hmm. and we have tried uh, submerging it for you know multiple hours so there's no water seepage so we are uh, really happy about achieving that uh, standard ip67 uh, rated standard battery packs uh, we are working on the uh, ais uh, standards as well and uh, apart from this specifically talking about the batteries we have been uh, we have ensured uh, with the technology that would not allow the battery packs to go into a thermal runaway because if we uh, you know see a couple of months uh, before uh 
there were plenty of issues because of heat waves in india that you know mm-hmm. evs were catching fires the battery packs were catching fires so we ensured that this kind of uh, you know mishaps should not happen in our battery packs or in our vehicles so we have come up with technologies which should not allow our battery packs to catch fires or you know uh, to uh, the cells to get into thermal runaway so that is that is one achievement that we have made in the battery packs we have already filed patents for uh, for the same we are uh, parallelly working on multiple ips so we are also working on our own bms our own wiring or uh, wiring harnesses but mm-hmm. as a company we are majorly focused on uh, you know building a product collaborating with other companies also to design co design co develop products and to ensure that whatever we are trying to build that should sustain and that should survive in the market that should actually help the customers that are buying the vehicles so we are not may, mainly focused on just building the vertical integration of the technology in house because that is very company centric we want to be society centric we want to ensure that whatever we are building is also making a difference in the society that is our first motto once that is uh, you know once we have achieved that motto then we will also come back to our own roots where we will also start vertical integration uh, mm-hmm. and uh, apart from this uh, your previous question also i i missed out on a point where uh, you know uh, the global expansion plans that we have so we already started talking to couple of players in the african market european market uh, the us and the uk market as well uh, there are multiple uh, enquiries from neighboring countries like nepal bangladesh sri lanka couple of them even from pakistan but right now india being such a big nation to cater uh, mm. i would say one and a half or two years we would not even have the bandwidth to you know think about going to any other uh, countries mm. best case scenarios uh, we grow as a company uh, to such a level that you know we have additional uh, you know i would say production capacity at our hand which we are not you know able to uh, cater in the indian market we would then plan to scale up to african regions because africa is again a similar market to an indian market we have already been to uh, africa to ensure mm-hmm. that you know whatever we are building it will survive and we have got good validation from the african market as well right now we are talking to a couple of players which will help us and expedite that process of scaling up to uh, the uh, african market we are also talking to world trade centers for this uh, for the scale up and i would say in the one in the next one and a half year or two years whenever we are nearing the path to profitability mm-hmm. that is where we will also look at for expansions um so uh who are your tier suppliers and vendors uh, if you can uh, tell us about that and what is the extent of localizations which you have achieved for the product okay so we are really proud to say that this is a made in india product and uh, the in terms of percentage if i have to say around 90 to 95% of the components uh, have been localized the remaining 5% includes the cells that we right now there is no other source for us to uh, you know uh, there is no other option for us actually right now uh, and we have to rely on the imports of the cells we are actually matlab uh, we are we are trying and uh, we are testing uh, uh, locally made cells so there are couple of companies which are making cells in india as well uh, we have been testing their cells from the past 3 months right now uh the data that we have uh, captured is not enough for us to rely and you know to be very confident that you know uh, this is the cell that we want to uh, work on so maybe a couple of months down the line we would be in a position that we will achieve 100% localization mm-hmm. right now we are at somewhere around 90 to 95% in both the models mm-hmm. and uh, to talk about the vendors it's a mix of uh, uh newer startups and also mm-hmm. you know vendors that are like 50 60 100 years in the industry mm-hmm. 
so uh, it actually helps us to uh, also mix and match the technology that we are trying to you know uh, introduce so for example the uh, the core components of the of the vehicle uh, which is the motor the controller we are working with companies which have been in the industry for quite long more than 30 35 years in the industry which which have enough data uh, and enough backing and enough experience to ensure that you know the motors won't fail uh, in the market however when it comes to new age technology for example iot for example uh, these uh, bms that we have for example uh, the controllers uh for example the uh i would say uh the features that we are trying to uh have in the vehicle just like uh, you know smart locking unlocking or mm-hmm. geo fencing of the vehicles or tracking of the vehicles uh or immobilizing the vehicles all all such kind of technologies we have you know we have partnered up with couple of uh, companies couple of startups Uh, mm-hmm. which have been working extensively from the uh, from the past couple of years in this uh, technology and it has been going well i mean uh, uh, we have been able to achieve uh, capturing data of around 40 plus parameters of the vehicle including battery packs including motors including controllers if there's any issue that is going to happen uh, if there's any irregularity in the in the vehicle we can uh you know monitor it and we can even have a preventive uh, maintenance alert to the customer sent to the customer's device that you know there something needs attention in the vehicle uh before any mishap happens so we are trying to work on such kind of innovative uh, you know technology that actually helps uh from our end to the to the customer to make sound decisions and also to ensure that uh, the vehicle that is actually going to uh, you know support